being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us not because of, our, of righteousness, the righteous thing we had done, but because of his mercy, he has saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He saved us by the washing of regeneration. Oh, yes, and the rebirth. So, you know, once you get washed by the blood of the Lamb, there's something about it. You feel different. Yes. Amen. You feel different. Yes. If you really know that God has cleansed you, excuse me, and made you whole, if you know it, there's a difference in the way you feel. Yes. So again, when you know who you are, then you don't want to offend the one that cleansed you. You want to, you know, you know, it's like the scripture says, a hog going back to his wallet mm -hmm. and a dog oh, going yeah. back to his vomit. Yeah, yeah. Dog will eat his own vomit. He will. Mm -hmm. You can, you can get a hog and put him in the house. Put an earring in his nose, <laughs> scrub him down, spray him with perfume. <laughs> Maybe got there to the dirt. Turn him loose. <laughs> He's gonna wallow in the mud. <laughs> He's a hog, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. He's a hog. But as a child of God, uh, God washed us and cleansed us. And we really don't want to go back to what we were. Whatever we were, we don't want to go back to it. You want to stay wherever you are and move forward, not backward. Okay? Okay. All right. We're talking about what? Serving God in a new way. Mm -hmm. yes. Read on. Next one. Next one, Romans. 319 mm -hmm. Now the Lord, uh, uh, now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law, whatever mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge. By the law is the knowledge of sin. This is what he's trying to get across to us. The law just shows us where the sin is. What is it that we're supposed to do about the law? We're supposed to get changed by the blood of the Lamb, get washed in the blood, and live a new life, a new way of living. And it's not us that lives it. We've got to let God be God. He says, I am the Lord that brought you out. So he's the one that's going to live this life through us. We can't live it. So, you know, sometimes we try too hard. <laughs> we, we really do. We try too hard to do what we think is the right thing to do when it's God that has to live it through us. And we have to lead, let him lead us and guide us. So everybody, if you're trying to keep the law, you're already guilty. <laughs> you're already guilty. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to please God, then you're clean in his sight. Yes, Jesus. That's all he wants from you. That's all. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. yes. Just pleasing him. Okay. That's all he wants. You know, we have so many rules and regulations, and when <laughs> the law was enacted, after it was enacted, the Pharisees made 616 rules to go along with the rules <laughs> to explain the laws. Oh, my That's right. Crazy. And so you were constantly breaking the law because you couldn't keep up with what you were supposed to do. You know, what are you supposed to do? You know, it's just like you go in some people's house. Oh, Lord. 
I won't make that one. <laughs> but anyhow, there are some things you just don't know which way you can't please a person. But we only please God by saying, Lord, what would you have me to do? And when he tells you, do it. And he's going to tell you because your heart, the scripture says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? But there's something about if your heart condemns you, God is great. If the heart, you say, well, this is something I should not do. I shouldn't be doing this. So you know that God is speaking to you. Yeah. Somebody said, God doesn't speak to me. Yes, he does. <laughs> Don't tell me he doesn't speak. If you belong to him, he speaks to you. That's right. But something in you makes you not want to do it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Lord. That's so right. you're not justified by the law. You're only justified by whether you're pleasing God or not. The law comes to serve. Give me Galatians, and we're just about finished here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I heard that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like for my same readers to read it. They can. If not, that's okay. Go ahead. So the law yeah. was put in charge to lead us to Christ, mm -hmm. that we might be justified. By the him. law is there to lead you to Christ. It's not for you to worry about. It's to lead you to Christ, to just show you these are the things that I would want you to do. But read on. Oh, you want to go to the end? Mm -hmm. Now that faith has has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. There you go. If you've got faith in Christ, you're not under the supervision of the law. Three. That's the end of that. That's the end of that. That's the end of that. That's not the end of the chapter. That's, that's good. That's good. All right. Now, give me the last scripture. Second Corinthians uh, 3 and 2. Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all This is what we want to be. Epistles read and known of all men. The world is looking at you because you're supposed to be Mr. and Mrs. Christ. That's right. And the world will look at you and say, I thought you was a Christian. I thought you was a Christian. They see you doing something. I thought you was I thought you were supposed to be saved. Known and read of all men. People, listen. How do they know what you're supposed to be doing and they know? <laughs> How do they know? That's what I want to know. How do they know what a Christian is supposed to do? And they don't do it. They, they read the word, they know the word, but they don't practice the word. They do not practice it. No. But they know what you're supposed to do. That's right, because they don't practice it. <laughs> they don't practice it. <laughs> and they want an excuse to yes. not do it. That's right. mm -hmm. And so you're their excuse. Yes. Don't be nobody's excuse. <laughs> don't you be an excuse for other folks not doing right. Say, well, I'll do right regardless. I, uh, the uh, story I tell about the guy I was standing at the store at the store at the store, in front of the store rather at the uh, place where you pick up a paper and this guy got his paper and he held it open for me and he said well you might as well get yours I got it open I said that's okay I'll pay for my own paper and I let him shut the rack back up <laughs> made him so mad <laughs> It made him so mad because I wouldn't steal a paper. I'm going to hell for 25 cents. <laughs> Agree. I mean, the paper didn't cost him. Back then, it didn't cost him nothing. <laughs> I'll start stealing now. We'll steal the newspaper. And I'll never forget. 